I was a very mediocre guy. I didn't want more out of life after mm. that point. To think one day I would have 100,000 subscribers, that YouTube would be my career. I started it for fun. Just every once in a while I get a regular job. Cause, Cause I get bored with it here. Every channel you can think about. Because when Tyrone Magnus reaches one million, he wants to be able to finally, finally address the millions of Magnus sites. If you smell out what the mag is cooking. I was fat. I was old rent like two months. Like, and they were sending, it was like right before the eviction. It's, it's like a wow. movie, like a movie yeah. story. Right? Ah, one million! <laughs> because I won't take steroids. So then I'm like, what the hell is I gonna do? Because early mm. success to a guy makes him think he can't be taught anything else. Let's, how's everything been? Because I haven't talked to you in like over a year. I feel like it's been about a year since the last time I talked to you. And it was funny. It doesn't even feel like that to me. I yeah. feel like I just talked to you for some reason, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny, too, with people that are busy in their careers yeah. and doing stuff. It flies. You know what yeah. I mean? Time really flies, man. And it's just like, wait a minute. I thought that was a few months ago. We just talking about a year, like so. I mean, it's it's. I don't know. I'm I'm relaxed on a very uh, sideways motion. You know, if I was a stock, I'd just be going sideways. You know, hey, I'm, I'm just, playing the long game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm in. I'm in my routine. Mm, you know, I know yeah. how many videos I need to make. I know what videos I need to make. But I am looking to take it to the next level. Mm. Um. I'm going to get in contact with somebody um, that kind of works with creators that are, are kind of around my level that want to yep. take it even higher, a lot higher. So yep. uh, I'm going to, you know, hopefully if, cause it, I know they're busy who are, you know, who I'm trying to get in yeah. contact with, I know they're busy. So it's like, you know, if not, I'm going to still continue to kind of, you know, move and shift and, you know, continue to grow and everything. So, um, yeah, that's it, man. I've been living like that kind of, um, that married life in a way to where you're, you're just set in those ways. It's like nothing new, really. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Um, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's you're, you're, you do the same stuff every day together and all this other stuff. And, you know, as far as uh, acting goes, but well, we, we know how the entertainment industry is now. So, you know, the, the guy that um, was working with me as my agent, uh, me and him have a deal on something. And it's kind of like, but he knows that I will only audition for certain shows, movies, or whatever. So right. the phone ain't ringing right now for me to <laughs> audition or nothing. Because he knows. I'm like, look, man, just certain stuff that I like. And the fans, the fandom at this point is severely angry at the industry for what they're putting out. They're not putting out for sure. what the majority of us want. It doesn't make us happy. It's too preachy. Mm. We just want great entertainment. And I'm not right. going to audition for something to where they have me play a role where I'm like, oh, well, ain't this a bitch? <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not. No. So, um... Yeah, so that's how that is. So right now, I'm just focusing on trimming down. I already lost, I don't know, maybe 20, 15, 20 pounds. Like, trimming down. Wow. You know, I've been too relaxed with her. Too relaxed. She's my weakness in that way. And I tell her all the time, I'm like, I blame you. She's like, it's not my fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's a good cook. She's a good woman. And you mm. know how it is kind of when you a guy and you love your woman and everything's going pretty well. All you do is fun stuff, eating, Correct. watching TV, yeah. up under each other all day, yeah. and you turn. It's like that meme. There's the there's the pit bull when you're single, and then you're the fat yeah. dog sitting on the yeah. couch. When you, that's what I yeah. turned into, and I'm just like, man, uh, being fat ain't good. You know, there's this hey. whole you know 
yeah, that might be controversial, but there's this whole thing where, yes, you should love yourself and accept yeah. yourself who you are. However, if you are not in good health, you need to take care of that. And Correct. walking up the stairs and getting winded and bending over to tie your shoes and that's a problem and all, that's for the birds. I'm, I'm kind of get lean and mean again because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know that feeling, man, because, you know, obviously me and my partner, we've been living together for a while and it's the same thing where, you know, and we both work from home, which is that it's like that double, double whammy, right? Like, OK, I did a video. I'm editing. I come downstairs. We hang out for a second. I go back upstairs, do some more stuff, come back. Hey. So I completely understand what you mean by that. Uh, yep. And I, I believe your lady works from home as well. Yes. Yeah, because she's got the channel. But. Yeah, um, she does want to start a new job. Uh, okay, because she it was interesting. She she started, and she's doing okay, but she's not doing as well as she did when she first started, and she mm. wants a little bit more money because she yeah. actually started during the pandemic. Everybody's money. Everybody was up. Correct. Yeah, because everybody was in the house watching nothing but cool. TV and streaming and everything. So for real, she wants a little bit more. So she's gonna start this new job soon so you know i'll have some time home alone to get a lot of stuff done instead of being yeah, up yeah. Under her all day, you know what i mean so we'll for sure well i mean so i mean going into that because like you've now been on youtube for how long how long have you been on i think, it's going, I think it's going to be 12 years in march wow right? isn't that wild isn't that right? wild to think about like that's and so I've run crazy into, yo i've run into dudes where it's like 12 years, if you're 22, that's half of your life. You know what I mean? Exactly. I've run into guys that they grew up watching me. It's so weird to hear that. But yeah, yeah it's like, you know, so uh, yeah. And it's the most lucrative career I've ever had, you know. Uh, <laughs> I was in sales for like eight years, and hmm. I settled in on a, um, a security company I used to work for. Um, selling home security systems and um, I was one of the best in there in the office and um, then they totally shifted how they did business I mean when I tell you stress close to YouTube stress <laughs> <laughs> when you if it's bad if it's bad I mean right, it was, right. you got the I mean it messed my relationship up that's how bad it got uh, and uh, yeah I was numb I was just numb I didn't know what to do and like 12 people had left before I did in the office. That's, you know, it's like, this ain't what I signed up for. You mm. change how your business practices now. This is not, I mean, people, they killed our paychecks the way they were doing stuff. It was just ridiculous. So um, after that, I got into other, a couple of other businesses in sales and um, I was still doing YouTube at the time, but YouTube had popped. And then when mm. it did, it was crazy because when it popped, I was back. I was owed rent like two months, like, and they were sending. It was like right before the eviction. It's, it's like wow. a movie, like a movie yeah. story. Right before yeah. the eviction happened, YouTube popped, and then yeah. I was. I, you know what I mean, then then I had the money to pay everybody off, and I was right. fine. Paying my car off. It was just everything was gravy, you know. But yeah. So, so like, obviously, you you have a particular personality you're you know and you're extremely likable which is fantastic in sales by the way <laughs> so if anybody's <laughs> like hey if you're likable and you're great a great personality you might want to look at a career in sales but um yeah. you know obviously you have an acting background and and mm -hmm. i i'd seen something about you having like you're super in your fitness game as well when you were younger as well so it's mm -hmm. like was obviously youtube was a new thing in you know the late 20 uh late 2000s going into 2010 so like what was like your coming you know growing up what was like your your trajectory what did you want to do and how did it how did it shift like what was like like walk me through that okay well i mean when i was younger i was one of the fastest kids in town so my whole thing oh, wow. was yeah i wanted to be you know a world-class sprinter you know so um, in high school, when I graduated, I was the fastest guy in the school. Hadn't broken any records because I wasn't a hard worker. 
Mm. I was a guy who leaned on my talent. Mm. Yeah. I like that to it. I wasn't arrogant. However, when the coach said work hard, I was like, why? <laughs> In some, you might hear that as arrogance, but I was just like, why? The race is four weeks from now. And as a young guy, you know, young guys are stupid sometimes. <laughs> But I had it explained to me one time, and it was in my senior year, that like the second half of the season, we had an assistant coach that that came on, and he used he said to us one day, he said, "Listen, Tyrone, he was like, listen, if you kill yourself at practice, when you run those races at the the events at the meets, there'll be a breeze." Ding. Just hearing the coach say, come on, Tyrone, work harder. That didn't work. But when the mm. guy gave me a reason, an mm. understanding of why you work so hard, mm. that's that that just the and you would think that the you know the light bulb goes off on other people earlier than that. But for me, for right. some reason, I just didn't see a need to work hard at practice. The real race is where you work hard. That's what I thought. Mm. So so my plan was this. I was like, okay, I had taken not the SATs, but the ACTs. And my guidance right. counselor told me, like, you know, she was like, you scored high enough to pretty much go anywhere you want to go. She was like, but, you know, you, you know, I didn't have any scholarships. And um, I wanted to stay close home, closer to mom because she was sick. At the time, so what I did was I went to Burlington County College, and I was going to transfer to Temple. Because Temple's known mm. for their running uh, track and everything. The second year in college, I went for a computer program, and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do really. Once I got into computer programming, because I wanted to, I was a huge gamer, huge mm. gamer in the house all day long. And I wanted to make video games. Once I got into it, I was like, I don't want to make video games. So, <laughs> it, yeah, programming is different than playing. And right. I was like, you know what? I ended up reading this article in a track magazine. And the guy was like, listen, this is all about steroids. And he was like, listen, all the top guys are on it. And he said at that time, I remember this. He said, I'm telling you right now, I know personally two top sprinters and they are the two top sprinters at this time that are on steroids. Wow. He wouldn't name them, but you know who they were? Donovan Bailey from, from Canada and wow. Mike Johnson. Those were the two top wow. guys at that time. And yes. he said that and I was like, I was always scared of steroids back then. Always hearing mm. about guys dying from heart attacks and liver failure, right. and kidney failure, and all this stuff. And I was like, I can't be a top sprinter because I won't take steroids. So then I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? So mm. that dream flushed right down the toilet. And I just got normal jobs. Like I was, mm. I worked at McDonald's. I was a very mediocre guy. I didn't want more out of life. After mm. that point, I, I I worked at McDonald's. I worked at Wendy's. I worked at was Caldor. It like, was it like was it like it just took the wind out of you for a second? Like is that it what what the, it felt yeah, like? Yeah, it took the wind out of me. And my thing was just all right, pay your bills. Mm. That was it. I didn't get my license until I was twenty two, because I always got rides from everyone else. Every time we went somewhere, I just was riding with my boys. Right. So I was that guy that was just super average, but I didn't want more. But I wasn't a bad guy, though. I wasn't running right. the street. I wasn't getting girls pregnant. I wasn't fighting. I wasn't selling drugs. I wasn't doing none of that. I was just a nice guy, just super average. Mm. And what? let me see what happened. I ended up. After Caldor and the restaurant jobs, I ended up getting a job um, uh, waiting tables. Mm. And that brought more, because uh, I was timid. 
I was timid. I wasn't like I am now. Um, I was the entertainer and the funny guy to the people I knew, but I couldn't mm. bring it out. I ran into a woman named Kate Rados. And thank you, Kate, if you ever see this, for just talking to me. Because when I waited at the table, mm. she loved my voice. And she was like, I want to give you an audition for Celebrity Deathmatch in New York City. Oh, wow. So I went with my mom up there, totally green and raw. Right. And I know what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. And I was auditioning for Shaquille O'Neal, which I could probably do now. Right. And who else? It was Shaquille versus Kobe or something. I can't remember. But I know <laughs> I auditioned for that. And um, I messed it up. But she said, you know what? She's afterwards, she said, I think you have a lot of raw talent. I want you to take some lessons and I want you to get mm. back in touch with me. So like everybody with a dream, I didn't take the lessons. <laughs> I didn't do what she asked right away. Just like a lot of average, just don't, after that steam, after that push, unless they're really calling you to do it, you know, you know mm. what I mean? My mom had a wonderful time coming there. She was proud of me and everything. So um, after um, my mom ended up passing away like a year or two later after that. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah. And, you know, she, that was a point where as a man, I realized, and I was thinking of this in Terminator 2, when uh, Sarah was like pleading with the guy to let her out with the doctor, Dr. Mm. Silverman around she was like please my son needs me he's naked without me and i was like she left me and my brother naked she took mm. so she was the overprotective mom she was so protective of us and took care of everything that when she passed away we didn't know how to do nothing mm. Har hardly knew how to cook for ourselves how to get an apartment on our own set up you know, the electric bill, get the power. I didn't do all that stuff for myself, everything. And mm. I ended up um, homeless at one point because I moved in with my uncle and that didn't work out. We were button heads and he put me out and I was just living motel to motel. But at mm. that time I was working for Mitsubishi selling cars. The Cherry oh, wow. Hill okay. Triplex. But when you, if you know anything about sales, when you start to get into sales, that's what usually gets people into positive thought, positive Correct. thinking, upgrading themselves. So I was on that path and I was mm. reading every day and I was listening to audio books. And that's, that's where the change happened in me. And I left the car sales because it was way too strenuous. Mm. You know, there were, I met some good guys there, but the business overall, at least in there, wasn't good. And that's when I started selling security systems. And that's when I was really upgrading my mind, my health, the body, the money was coming. I was one of the best in the company. They were looking at me for management. You see what mm. I'm saying? And then this is going to be funny to people, but you know, how they tell you, you, if you, if if you know someone who's done it, it makes it that more tangible. Yeah. So at that point, because I've been through sales so much, I was no longer had that stage fright fear, that public speaking fear anymore. Right. Added a little bit. So for the love of Ray J comes on. This is going to sound weird, right? <laughs> okay. A friend from high school won for the love of Ray J. Wow. And she had transformed herself. She was a cute chick in high school, but she was on another level when she was on for the love of Ray J. And like people we all knew was like, hey, yo, did you, did you see her? I was like, yeah, I didn't know it was her at first. You know what I'm saying? But after she won, she was acting, she was modeling, and I went to this little event she did, and I was so proud of her. You know what I'm saying? And it clicked. Mm. I was like, wow. I was like, maybe I should try my hand at entertainment. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just when you see know somebody that has done something, like I said, it makes it more tangible. So right. I went on, I went on and in this, this interview for this company where we had to like model and walk and do all this stuff. And I ended up placing kind of high and they wanted to work with me. But then I ended up reading something about them being a scam. So I didn't deal with them. But then I mm. found a real agent in Philly and I went mm. to her. Yeah, I went to her and I told her what I wanted to do. And I mainly just wanted to model because I was still in really good shape then. And she said, well, I need you to learn how to act. You know why? And I said, why? She said, because if you learn how to act, then you get paid more money. If you're modeling a commercial, if you have a speaking line, you get paid way more than just sitting there. And she said, you make more money and I make more money. Okay. And I was like, right. okay. So she put me through like six acting classes. They're like for an hour long every Saturday. And I do my monologue and she's just sitting there smiling. And she was like, okay. She was like, I don't want you to answer me today. She said, I want you to represent us at IMTA. A lot of big stars have been there. I think you're good enough to win. And I'm thinking to myself, like I had a lot of confidence then, but I'm like six acting classes and you're telling me I have it to win. Right. I'm like, okay, maybe I have a talent for this. And um, at the time though, you had to pay to go. It was like a week of university of acting classes as well as competition. Oh, wow. Ashley Kutcher was there. Jessica Biel was there. Eva Longoria was there. A lot of the guy from Transformers, the main Marine that commands everybody, that guy. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tyrese, yeah. he was there. They all competed there. So I was like, okay, so it's a legit thing. It's a write-off. You know, you pay for your hotel and all that stuff. So I was okay, I win. And I won. And I, it oh, was wow. like, I was, let me tell you, when I tell you my, my confidence was sky high when I went, because mm. at the time I was super, and, and there's a lot of people out there that tell you it's garbage, but to me, the law of attraction is real. I Birds agree. of a feather flock together. Flock together. And your mind brings you opportunities and people. If you're a person, like I, I grew up with a friend that, uh, he was very um, judgmental of white people. He, you know, mm. like look, as black people, we know our history over here in America, but he right. was more judgmental than most. And he would always find and run into these situations where he would run into racism <laughs> or bigotry. I have, friends like, I have friends like that you know, as well. And I'm like, yeah. I never, like, and I have experienced it. <laughs> I know right. it exists, you know, I, yeah. you know, I know reality, but I'm like, he, he is always running into always. this. Yeah. Why do you always see this? But I've only seen it maybe once or twice in my life. So right. you're, you're the way you think brings you your reality. You do create it. And at this mm. time I took hundred percent accountability. I'd already been on this, this, this winning streak at the job. Mm. I was trending for like $115,000 that year. Like it was going to be my first six figure year. Like everything was lined up and I went there and one of the professors met me and, and he wanted me to speak this before I won. He wanted me to speak in front of the hundreds of thousands or, or thousands of everybody competing there. He wanted to talk to me, interview me. There was something that you know what i'm saying so right. and i know you can tell it's like yo yeah. it was lined up and i won almost every acting competition i think there was like two i came in second and they got us all lined up on stage we we're all dressed in our best and the guy that almost beat me was dressed up like uh james bond he had the james bond tuxedo on with the black <laughs> pants and the white tux Yo, and they were calling off names and it's getting down to me and him. He's like, yo, man, I was like, I know, I know. He was like, yo, if you win, congratulate. I'm like, yo, if you win, like, and I, yeah. ended up winning. I couldn't believe it. I ended up winning. I was just like, yo, this is the first thing I ever 
big time that I ever won. Right. Like, like when I was a track runner, I ran, I won several races, but I never won like the big state meets. I was never right. the division champion. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So there, I was still doing YouTube and that's when everything just started to land. You know what I mean? I needed that big push. I met with several agents after that. I signed with one, but it just really never went there. I ended up going out along a lot of auditions on my own. I ended up being on, was it Discovery? I forgot the name of that ch the, the show. But if you look at it, I ended up being on that um, and a few other things. And um, as you know, I ran into Michael Mateo Rossi, the, uh, the director that put me in... Um, and um, he wanted to do Vengeance. He wanted to pitch mm -hmm. that to Netflix. We didn't get that. Um, it's still something that we're working on. You know how things go on the cutting room floor? Correct. If any of you that don't know, some of the best stuff and stuff you have ever seen has been on the cutting room floor for 10 plus years. You just, yep. these guys are working on it, pitching it for years. So if yep. we ever get the chance to do that, I'm definitely going to do that. I met another guy uh, that's another YouTuber. He's an animator. He was on. A, he was an animator on, I think, Spider Man One and Two, uh, the oh, Amazing wow. Spider Man One and Two um, with yeah. Andrew Garfield. He's done a bunch of other stuff. That's the um, Red Line Ronin. I'm voicing him whenever um, oh, we cool. can get that going. Yeah, and you know, I've had a chance to meet a lot of different people. You you, you know that you know so. It's really cool when you run into like, you know, Tom Holland, you find out he watches you. Zack Snyder contacts you, you find out that he watches you. And, mm. you know, like when the Russos were doing the, uh, you know, in game. So crazy. Or, yeah, they did that. They did that message to me on Twitter. I'm like, man, yo, this is crazy. It's, yeah. it's, it's weird. I'm not mainstream actor, but I've been able to achieve a certain amount of notoriety at this level right. and just entertain people, which is what I always wanted to do. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like one, two things I always wanted to do happened already and I didn't even realize it, right? And they'll tell you that when you have a dream and you're focused on it, it'll happen, but it's never gonna happen the way you thought it was gonna happen. Always, it's always like that. For some people it does, but those are the outliers. For it's everybody who's a positive thinker, it happens, but it's just not the way you thought. Two things. You're right. I had a dream when I was younger to work from my laptop with stocks, to be a stock oh, trader wow. and be rich and work. <laughs> that, that Corona commercial where they're on the beach and you see the guy, he's on his laptop. You don't know what's going on. Right, right, right. I know exactly what you're talking about. Laptop. Yeah. yeah, and then you got yes. the Corona and Corona. I, said, I want that when I when I, when I was younger, and I was like, one day it dawned on me. I was in a hotel. I was in L.A. and I was working on my lap. I was like, I travel and work on my laptop for a fucking living, which is and so crazy. The second one was I wanted to be on a billboard in New York City Times Square. Guess mm. what? You know I got on it. But I wasn't there to see it. YouTube. What? Yes, YouTube. It was for YouTube Black one year. A certain amount of us all got to be on a billboard in New York City Times Square. And they were wow. supposed to tell us the date, but they didn't. <laughs> oh, sorry, we forgot. <laughs> Got to send you the email. <laughs> well, thanks, because I was going to take a bus, <laughs> walk, run. I was going to get there so I could take that picture. Right. So two of my dreams have already happened. You know what I mean? So that's so wild. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and it's it's crazy because like you were your story sounds so interesting, right? Like going for, and it's so weird because like. I think a lot of us have like this moment, like you said, you're when you're a kid, you have these dreams and then you get into 
you, you start doing your school and stuff like that. And like, as I was a track, I was a sprinter myself. So ah. when you're telling, when you're telling me all this, I'm like, I know exactly, I know exactly this. Right. But it was one of those things too, where my dad, he, he didn't, he, when he came to Vegas, um, he was poor, like they were poor. So we didn't grow up poor. We grew up middle class, but I didn't have the same work ethic that he did. So he was kind of like, dude, you don't work hard enough. Like he's like, you're naturally faster, but you're not. So he, so everything you said, it was what my dad was saying. But then I would hear those same, some of the same things my dad would say, I would hear from a coach or from somebody else. And I'm like, dad, like, I'm going to do this. He's like, dude, I've been telling you this for years. And it was (laughs) So I'll see you with like, white man tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just one of those things where it was like sometimes it's like it's like how it's how it's told to you and who tells it to you. Like it's like yeah. sometimes you're like, oh my dad's just he's nagging me, he's bugging me. But it's mm-hmm. because you're too close sometimes. Like, and I think mm-hmm. it also works in your favor. You had brought up that whole point of somebody that you see make it in something. And you're like, I know this person. Like, I know yeah. who this person is. And that yeah. tangibility is like, well, if they could do that, like, yeah. I... And YouTube was a yeah. similar thing for me because I had friends that were doing it and they were telling me, oh, you should think about doing a YouTube channel. And I yeah. was like, for real? Yeah. And I was like, well, they do one. Why, I, why, why wouldn't I be able to do this? Like, right. so when you started, so you started doing YouTube when you were already pursuing so you were, did youtube and started pursuing acting after the fact yeah what it was no 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 acting was first because pe- people try that's one of the things people try to oh you just you trying to be an actor now you, you t-. no no i was acting first <laughs> got it so there was the acting and then what it was was like okay i won this so the bell went off I was like, I really need to succeed at YouTube because um, at at this time they were running parallel, but I started the acting first, but the YouTubing was like, hmm, while I'm trying this acting thing, let me see if I I got what it takes to be on YouTube. Mm. And then after I won, I was like, okay, wait a minute. This was confirmation that I had it. Okay. You cannot go on all these auditions with a full-time job. Mm. I I had heard about you, certain people making it on YouTube, so to speak. They've got, they've got the money to actually quit. So that's when I really started working harder on YouTube. So that's YouTube was kind of like an avenue to allow me time to Mm. go auditions or go get to Hollywood in the side door like a lot of people have with YouTube. That's kind of how, that's exactly how right. I did it. Do the right. side door with YouTube. That's what I've run into. So, you know, yeah. So, because I know you had talked about before that you've seen like Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Of course. Now, what, 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 what about Dragon Ball was interesting to you like what about it was like i can actually i enjoy this well uh first of all i would say the first thing well first off okay so what i want to i want to interject real quick wikipedia had a profile of me up and they had me quoting or saying that goku was my inspiration for something i have no if anybody i, I have no idea what they got there <laughs> I have I saw a couple of things on Wikipedia that wow. I had no idea where they got that from. And I actually attempted to get it changed and they ended up taking my profile down because I attempted to get it changed. I'm like, that's not true though. I didn't say that. So right. it was like stupid. It was like, but, but maybe like, um, Wikitubia, I think Wikitubia has a profile of me up now mm. or whatever. But anyway um it is what it is there's a lot of things that like there's a lot of quotes attributed to bruce lee that he never said but it sounds like he would have said it so you know right. <laughs> yeah but um so with with dragon ball as a kid i didn't know i was watching dragon ball there was this animated movie that came on when i was a kid and i was a fan of japanese animation 
which they would call Japan animation when I was younger. I remember that. Before really? They would call it anime over here. They would call it Japan animation. I remember that. Japan animation. Yeah. Yep. Around. So that what time shows that were you people, watching? Well, I wasn't. I would watch anything oh. I could. When I, so, as a kid, I noticed there was a difference between Scooby Doo and Robotech or Trans or mm. Z or Voltron. I noticed there was something different and I liked right. it. You know what I mean? And then there was this cartoon on with this little kid with spiky hair mm. and he was kicking people's butts. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I remember hitting the record. I put the tape in and I recorded. <laughs> Yo, and I think it was like <laughs> Mystical Adventure or something. Hmm. When he first, when he, I think it's one of the first time he runs into, what's his name? Tao Pai Pai or something? Yeah, it's a, uh, um, uh, wow, wow, my brain farting. I know you're talking about, yes. Yeah, I, I, General I, I Tao. Remember, yeah, General <laughs> Tao. And I remember because he jumped up and he hit the pillar, three, three, and he hit it with the, <laughs> and, he said, and he said something like, you said something like uh uh where the dragon ball was he said i'll be back in a half an hour ah, you threw it and then he jumped on it, it was he just, jumps on it <laughs> yeah and it's still it. i was like yo this is crazy and it was <laughs> it was not an ocean dub but it was a different dub there's like mm. i found a little bit of footage out there his name is zero in the movie his name is not goku it's zero oh yeah wow. it's zero god look i'm telling you one night i was online just looking different stuff up about this it's out hmm. there you can find it there's a certain oh, they i'm so zero. interested now this is yeah. so he crazy actually had, he had a better voice Tao had a better voice than he does in the movie with like the real movie he does he right do more commanding but anyway I remember watching that and I was just like, yo, this kid is no joke. Fast forward to my teens. It was like the only thing I'd ever seen on him. All of a sudden, there's this thing called Dragon Ball Z that's coming on Sundays. And I think it was channel 17 in my area, 57 or 17. I remember that. Mm. And, and I'm looking at this dude and I'm like, I'm into it. I'm like, is this the kid? that I remember mm. seeing when I was a little boy. <laughs> and the more I got into it, I was like, I think it's this kid. And I'm like, yo, Japanese animation does stuff where they grow up with you. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, that was the most intriguing thing to me at first with Dragon Ball right. Z. I was like, he grew up with me, this is nuts. So, right. and then the more I got into it, of course, all the martial arts, the fact that Goku thought that he could do anything, even mm. though he might not be able to, not having that limitation in your mind allows yeah. you to reach levels that other, I guess you could say for lack of a better word, rational thinking people might not be able to reach because they're kind of like, you know. That's the reason why Vegeta's always, oh, impossible, because <laughs> he doesn't think exactly. like Goku. Right. right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but he's a hard worker, and that's right. the reason why he's my favorite. He is, he's my favorite in the whole show. You know, yeah. his hard work ethic, as much as they beat him down and they they make him look stupid because of his arrogance and stuff. But the, the, the one out of all the quotes that he has, one of my favorite that gets me hyped is when he's fighting Majin Buu, stalling time for Goku. You mm. remember that? I, I don't know the quote, but... Majin Buu, I, I don't remember it either, totally. But Majin Buu beats him into the damn ground. Mm. And he finally gets up. He's like, what? You think I would give up? And he's walking toward him, holding that arm that he yeah, always holds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he, you know... Kid Boo's just looking at him like, what? What the hell's going on? And he's just letting him know, you're fucking with me. Prince yeah. Vegeta! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Goku Cooper say it again. And I'm just like, yo, that is how you got to be with life, man. Yeah. You got to take it by the horns, man. So, yeah. 
Goku and Vegeta probably inspire me the most out of them all. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's so crazy because I I had a very similar take to the show like you did was mm-hmm. when I was a, when I was I had to be in like maybe middle school, maybe sixth grade. And it was on Cartoon Network. Dragon Ball Z it was on Cartoon Network. And I was like, what is this? And I I had heard later on that they actually brought Dragon Ball to the States for a very short run in like the 90s, like the early 90s or something like that, or the or the, the early 90s or the late 80s. And it um they were trying to test it in the States. It, and it just didn't right. work. Right. And they so they pulled it. And then they brought Dragon Ball Z to the States in the in like the mid to late nineties. Mm-hmm. Um but I remember when I saw it and I was like it was coming on every day on Cartoon Network. And I was like okay. That was, was after like, I discovered it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, because like when I was, when I'm watching, I'm like, hold on. I was like, it's the next. The, so this story continues. Like I, I never yeah. seen a show like that before. Where I was like, oh, this, the very next episode takes place. The like right after. I was yep. like, this is weird. I was like, this is a yeah. new thing. <laughs> um, and it was a very similar thing for me, you know, with Goku and Vegeta, and like I was like, oh, this is so cool, and it was so. It's so interesting because, because you saw. So when did you actually end up watching it? How old were you when you saw it? Oh, I was a teenager, I think. Um, mm. It was like I said. I know I was watching it every Sunday morning. Mm. Um, at the time, it was the Ocean Dub. It was mm-hmm. really, it was you know edited to hell. There was when oh, it was, yeah. when you know they would tell you. I'm gonna send you to the next dimension. Dimension, it, yeah. it, right? Yeah. It, it, yes. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and Toonami was after it gained traction. I was already right. buying tapes from from oh, hobby wow. stores. Yeah, I was already buying VHS tapes from hobby stores oh, wow. that had three or four episodes on it when it started showing on Toonami. That's so yeah. crazy because like, because like, yeah, because you would have been, because how old are you? I'm 46. Well, black don't crack. Let's go. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so crazy. You got you that master like herb or whatever yeah, it is. You, you look like you're in your 30s for sure. So I was like, I was like, what? So, because like, so you say you're 40 what? Six. We're literally 10 years apart. Which is wow. crazy. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so, which, but this makes a lot of sense though, because I, when I was seeing it on, um, when I was seeing it on Toonami and you were already buying it in stores, cause I, I was, I couldn't get to stores unless I had somebody take me to us. I didn't know nothing right. about that. So that actually makes right. a lot of sense. Cause I, the, I started getting the tapes when, uh, when Dragon Ball Z was done. And GT started to, I started hearing stuff about Dragon Ball GT, so I started buying tapes for GT. I was like, oh, what's this GT thing? But um, I don't really care for GT that much. But Dragon Ball Z, I really liked a lot. Um, but so yeah, because like in my head, when you're you're talking about um, these Japanese animation shows when you were a kid, like I know my dad, he didn't even realize he was watching some of this stuff like speed racer and like some of these other forms of content. When he was a kid, he didn't even know half of the stuff he was watching was Japanese anime. Uh, so were there things like, cause when you said Robotech and some of the other shows, like, did you watch any of these other shows when you were younger and, you just like them or, or you only knew of them? Um, Robotech, I, I think only came on cable. So I only got to see that mm. once in a while, but I got to see Transformers, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I mean, Transformers, I'm thinking, trying to think of the earlier stuff. Uh, mm. Trans or Z, um, Trans or Z, Voltron, um, Ronin Warriors. Ronin Warriors. Um, yeah, Ronin Warriors. I remember that. Uh Ronin Warriors. There was another one too. And it sh- in the show they had a ship named Ramrod. I remember that. I remember the name. I remember the name Ramrod. Yeah, Horn what? Oh. See? I messed you up. <laughs> oh 
wow. Oh my God. I need to figure that yep. out. That's wild. I remember yeah. that name. That name, yep. is, I was like Ramrod. Oh my God. Yep. Hold on. I, got, I have to look this up. Hold on. Uh, Ramrod, Ramrod. Oh my God. If I can't find this, well, I'm pretty sure somebody in the, in the comments is going to say something. So, was there a time like in during your YouTube journey, right? So, like, because obviously you had. You, you've seen Dragon Ball, you, uh, you are attached to certain characters for particular reasons, right? Like you right. say to yourself, like the work ethic and things like that. And obviously these are things that you aligned with based off of where you were at a particular point in time, right? So like when you started your YouTube journey, what was what was that? Was there like, um, obviously you're you're on your high of acting and trying to figure out what that next thing was, but like, was there was there a fear of if it wasn't going to work or was it just like i just want to make this happen because there was there's a there's a a massive thing that i think a lot of people that started following you was because of your insatiable uh persistence of 1 million subscribers like you were like i'm i'm calling this right. like was that from the get go or was it like a like a, a freight train of confidence that's continued to build like how did that yeah yeah it built it built from um just the love of doing the videos and seeing the success of the videos happening um imta might have had something to do with it but i don't remember at that time but i remember being really hyped one day and I was wearing mm. a Superman shirt. I remember because I made the video and I wanted to get to a million that year. I remember that. And I had that oh, vision wow. and I worked on it. And I didn't get to it that year, but I got it. I, I, I can't remember if it was a year after or whatever, but I did get it. And it was one of those things, man. It, it, it There was no stopping me and you can feel it. That's one mm. thing with your dreams. There are f dreams that you can feel and mm. you, you know, they tell you the best dreams are the ones that, you know, make you the happiest, but scare you a little bit. They scare you a little maybe bit. You yeah. Yeah. Maybe you won't just, maybe you won't make it or, you know, so, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what it was for me. I just, I saw, I started to see the success of other YouTubers and kind of, I wanted to get to that next level. With, with my channel and, and you know and like that Hodge twins were an inspiration for me mm. you know i saw them blowing up at one point i was watching them before they blew up and i got to see them change you know like <laughs> the more money they were getting they got better house they got the, their teeth were crooked they got braces <laughs> they on got and, braces you know, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, they got new yeah. haircuts. But it's just like everything, yeah. you just saw them upgrading and you were really happy for them and they were just becoming more and more famous. I was like, damn, I was like, I got to get to these dudes level one day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it was just seeing stuff like that and knowing that you were all YouTubers. And matter of fact, shout out to them. They were the first um, guys to give me a push on YouTube. I, mm. I did a video because they they were having a hard time um, with their low. They both like injured their lower backs. This is oh, weird. Wow. Okay, I, th this is one of these weird things where I'm wondering is this some type of? I know there's an energetic connection between twins because they mm. know what each other are thinking sometimes and stuff like that, mm. and they dress alike and they act alike. And you take it back to GI Joe, where they had the twins. If you punched one, the other one would feel yes. it. You remember that? Yeah. Yes. So I'm like, there's got to be something to that because these guys, like, they both hurt their backs. And I'm like, how do you both do it? And then right. when I, I met them at um, YouTube Black, and they came up to me, they, they, they like hit me, hit me in the leg. And they was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> like they came because they didn't go the year before, but they came. And they was like, yeah, man, we found out where you was going to be here. So we came up here. I was like, for real? Like, yo, thank you. That's know, so we had, yeah, that was cool. We had a good time talking and everything. So I asked him, I said, because I got a scar right here. I said, where did y'all get these scars on your heads? So one of them was like, like one of them threw a wrench one time and hit the other one in the head by accident. 
if you look at them, they both got scars on their head, right where I do. Like right. you can see mine right there. And then the other one was in the closet and like an iron fell on him. <laughs> so it's it's weird. It's like, does your bodies make each other even out your scars <laughs> and your problems? I'm like, this is crazy to me. Right. You know what I mean? Like this is two times a pair of twins got the same injury right. one after the other type of shit. I'm right. like, yo, there's something up with that brotherly twin connect. Cause you know, twins are almost the same person except split. Right. Even though they do have different personalities. You talk to each one, you can tell the difference. Yeah. You can tell the difference between them for sure. Yeah. And, and yeah. one is taller than the other. Like one's like six, two, one, six, three. Yeah, it's like, sl yeah, slightly yeah. taller. Yeah. 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 And they were even telling the story about how they, um, like Keith, no, Kevin was killing Keith in the womb. Kevin was oh, wow. taking the, more of his nutrients oh, wow. and it was killing him. And that could be the reason why Kevin is the taller one. Because that's he, hilarious. That could be the reason why. Yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> man. Yeah, so, but yeah, shout out to them, man. I still watch them. They crazy as hell. <laughs> they say a lot of stuff I never say, but they, uh, <laughs> you know, I've had a chance to personally talk to them. And yeah. the majority of what they say is jokes, but they're good dudes. They really are good dudes. So Yeah, I met them at um I think it was a Studio seventy one party at VidCon one year. I would say it was like mm -hmm. 2017, 2018. I forgot what it was. But I, I met they were their manager. Yeah, they were their MCN for. Oh, were they under Studio? They were yeah. under Studio Seventy One. Yeah, because Ismahawk, we were under Studio Seventy One, so that's how I we had met. I had met them there because I was like, I think that's the Haas yeah. twins. Went to them, introduced myself, said what's up. Um, but yeah, so I mean, when you were when you were building this right, and obviously through time, you start to notice like how how the how the viewer changes like and you start to see like okay well these things are popular but now they're not as popular and we're in like mm -hmm. how it like what's the mindset of of when these things are changing like how you tend to just adapt and go or do you kind of wait a little bit like what's the like how do you go through all that um with that i think I think, and to tell you the truth, I think in a way it's saved me in a way mm. um, because I've never focused on specifically one thing. Yeah. And I think that has allowed me to stay relevant with most times, you know, um, you know, everyone could, like, I, I'm not as hot as I once was, you know, as popular as I once was, but it's like um, to continue in this line of business. You have to stay relevant in some form or fashion. Now, some right. YouTubers, I think they chase relevancy in the worst way. And we see it right. all the time. They just Correct. chase whatever's hot or they do whatever will get them views, bad right. or good. But with me, I don't like doing videos that I don't want to do or don't have an interest in. So one of the things that would make me more money now is making videos on wrestling. But I'm not interested in wrestling anymore because they they drove me insane years ago. I may mm. come back. I've, I've told people that I, I flirt with the idea of coming back, maybe watching a few things. And my boy Blake Grayson, shout out to you, bruh. You know, he's um he's chasing his wrestling dream. He's already been on Raw and SmackDown a couple of times. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I told him, I said, you got this promise from me. When you make it there, I will start watching again. So I did tell hey. him that. Um, but the fact that I do movie reviews, unboxings and mm. reactions and commentary on news, mm. you know, trailers, gaming footage, I do live stream gaming. You know, I was doing the Magnus answers what I would answer people's questions. I should start doing that again, um, where, you know, I was answering so many people's dating and life questions. That was fun to mm. do, but just say, I only did wrestling talk. My right. channel would have fizzled out a long time ago because I wouldn't have wanted there to do it anymore. Or hmm. it would have, I would have been painstakingly fake smiling doing it. You got what I'm right. saying? I know because exactly what you most, mean. 
yeah, most of us that make it on YouTube don't want to go back to um, the normal nine to five anymore because mm. we have a certain uh, comfortability that we've built with how we live our lives with YouTube. Right. Now, I met, uh, no, <laughs> I won't mention him, but I, I'll see, I don't know if he wants me to say it, but um, good YouTuber, he's funny. Um, he actually was in, he, he, he does similar stuff to what I did. And he, he actually had overcome me at one point, you know, he passed me, you know what I mean? And mm. uh, he's real cool, you know what I mean? I've talked a couple of times and he, he told me one time, he said, man, he says, every once in a while I get a regular job because cause I get bored with it here. You know, I make videos all day, but hey. I miss that nine to five life. It's weird. I was talking about it with my girl the other day. I said, sometimes I just want that nine to five to where I got my work friends. We hang out on the weekends. We do stuff together. I said, because once I started doing this, nobody can hang out with me. It's right. me all by myself. I can text right. you. I can call. But I got to wait till you get off. Right. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, doing the multiple different types. I'm lucky I had interests in multiple things because it's kept, I think, I personally think it's kept my channel alive. And mm. nowadays, you know, and I, I've always gotten heat at one time or another, but I get heat now because I don't like the majority of the entertainment out there. And people mm. tell me that I've changed, but I haven't changed. I've stayed the same. The entertainment has changed. Correct. But if you watch me every day, you know that when you see Tyrone see something he loves, you see that guy that blew up all those years ago again. Right. So once they get back to normal, I'll get back to what you used to say. But it's right. still me. You're just seeing more of an unhappy me that you didn't right. see much. 10 years ago. Right. Yeah, you know. And that's one so. thing too, like um, one of the other discussions I had, um, it was, uh, I think with Heavenly, he was saying, you know, you have people like, oh, you fell off. And I and somebody had said something like, oh, like he fell off. And I'm like, you have to get somewhere to fall off though. Like, it, it, like and, and, I, and, and at the yeah. same time, and I think at the same time, it's like, nobody stays at the peak forever. Like, that's just not Never. how any nobody. of it works. Nobody. Actors, musicians, businesses, like that's just, you have your spring, summer, falls and winters. You just, you have those. So, and yeah. it's just one of those things of, can you adapt to stay re relevant enough to when your spring and summer come back, you're yeah. ready to go. Like, and it's, I think that's something that, I think nowadays is more uh, looked down upon when it's like, oh, well, this person is not as popular as they used to be. It's like nobody, no nobody does that though. Like <laughs> it's so yeah. interesting. Talk to, talk to PewDiePie about that. Ask him about Mr. Beast. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like no one stays on top forever. You know what's right. funny? The same guy I talked to, I talked to you about about he quits his job or whatever. I mean, he, he gets jobs. And, uh, yeah, he told me he gets jobs and then he quits whenever he gets tired of being told what to right. do. That's what he told me. Right. But um, I saw them talking sh about him on Twitter and they were saying, oh, this dude fell off. All you got to do is check out uh, Social Blade. Now, Social Blade, it's not completely accurate. However, right. <laughs> because I know my own numbers. I right. know it's in the ballpark. Right. I went to this dude's channel. I'm like, this dude's still making like twenty five thousand dollars a month. Right. He's making. But I guarantee you, to all the kids <laughs> and the and the guys in the basement talking go trash on this dude, he's making more than you and your parents put together every year. I will fall off every day to pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trust me, this dude, unless he's a complete financial <laughs> moron, right. his all his bills are paid and he can be have fallen off. But right. we all know he didn't fall off. He's just not as popular as he was. But right. come on, man. He's still world famous. He still entertains people every day. People love him. Mm -hmm. He's making tens of thousands of dollars every month like what are you talking about he fell off <laughs> people do that when they don't like you to try to get at you but it's yeah. like no no yeah you know 
it's it's a, it's just interesting to me, and I I think it's one of yeah. those things too where you know it's so funny because um, I know your partner she has a channel, uh, mm -hmm. and my girlfriend she comes on and does reactions with me to certain shows, um, and uh, I had told her she because she was like hey you know um, what if I did a couple reactions with you I was like that's great i was like i just want to make sure that you're aware that once you put yourself on camera people are going to say whatever they feel like they want to say to you i was like and you have to have you have to have the awareness of of like hey am i okay with people talking out of pocket am i okay with dealing with that because not everybody <laughs> can deal with that yep. and I, uh... she said, <laughs> it, it started yeah. happening and she was like, you know, she was getting really frustrated and, you know, upset. And, you know, I had I had to say something on a video about it. Um, but I was telling I was like, look, like this is the unfortunate side of the Internet is you you're never going to you this. It's weird. The Internet shows what people are really thinking, mm -hmm. but never will say to you to your face. Yes, it's, the, it's the, such a rarity. Just mostly no one will say what they say online to your face and that's but, almost anybody but that's but it's almost what they really want to say they just won't say it to you i was like so yeah. i was like so it's one of those things it's like a weird space i was like so if if you're okay with that we can continue to do it i was like but it's it's a it's it's not made for everybody to really handle that type of scrutiny publicly um <laughs> i yeah yeah i uh as far as me dealing with it like i uh one of the first comments on my first video called me the n-word yeah so i was like okay it's got to be down it's, it's all downhill from here exactly That's supposed to be the top <laughs> word you can call a black person right exactly. so yeah yeah it's all downhill from here so um at first i i would respond to people in the comments i think this is the it's the same trajectory that every youtuber goes to you you see it it bothers you you're offended you say something back or you might say something in your videos about it or you might make a whole video about it but then you're in it long enough to where you're like it's just the way it is mm -hmm. you know i remember growing up and seeing stuff about models and actors talking about you know you'll be told that you're fat or you're too skinny or you're ugly or unattractive. This is the business. And while it may not be right, it is in this business. And that's what it is on YouTube. People mm. sit behind the computer and they will say anything to bring you down. I guarantee you that 99.9% .9 of the people that attack people online, they're not happy. Nope. You have to realize that these people have major issues like i've Correct. never tried to comment on someone's thing and say that they're ugly or say their girlfriend's stupid <laughs> or or you know it's just it's just the dumbest stuff but the that's hurt people hurt people it's just how it is yeah. and <laughs> you know she doesn't deal with it too much you know she's had some stuff and you know mm. she asked me how to deal with it and i told her just ban them just you just block them immediately um majority of the time they're looking for some type of recognition for sure I, bruh i'm gonna tell you one that let me know that even though i didn't believe it at the time a guy he called me the n-word which i've been mm. called several times on and i can't even count right. um and i blocked him do you know this dude wrote me an email saying I'm sorry I called you that, but I was trying to get your attention because you wouldn't answer me in the live chat. You think <laughs> that that's the way to get the attention of someone you like? You don't say to a woman walking down the street, you like, hey, bitch, hey, <laughs> hey. You don't say that. And, and the girl that answers to that and comes to you, Run. Run. run if you that away. ignorant of a Negro to say that and she likes that, run. Because you got yeah. a world of problems coming. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they want attention. They want recognition. Um, 
You know, you, you just gotta block them and keep on moving. It, it's it's or step or don't read the comments. There are some people or that don't, yeah. don't read the comments anymore. That's it. So. Yeah, and I I think too, and the reason I ask is obviously there's going to be people um, that are trying to aspire to become a YouTuber, you know, and and it's mm-hmm. one of those things now where obviously when we were growing up, it wasn't a thing, it wasn't a thing at all. We didn't, we're like, oh, right. I can't wait to be a YouTuber, but they look at what our profession is as again a regular person, tangible. Yeah. I have a camera yeah. at home. I have a computer at home. I could do. I could do this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's some of those things that they just don't really understand yet until they dive into it and right. start receiving some yeah. of this stuff that it's hard to deal with. I think at times, um, you know, I'm going to tell you, it's like, since we're talking about anime, they're like anime bullies. Yeah. You're in training. Okay. You're my hero academia in <laughs> training and right. you are dealing, you've got a talent. And these mm. bullies just keep coming at you over and over again. But remember, mm. your success burns them up. It reminds them of just how weak they are and untalented mm. they are, or the fact that they refuse to even use their talent to do anything. You right. know? So a lot of them are like Pakago and all these other people that just. They would like hurting people because they've got mental issues, you know, mm. but keep succeeding. Trust me. The best you can do is ignore them because they want that attention. Bullies love yeah. if they can, you know what I mean? You turn around yeah. so they can bite you, so they can hurt you. Yeah. If you don't pay attention to them. Most of the time, most bullies go away, but your success is that punch in the fucking face. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. That'll do it. That'll lay them out. And I think that's the thing that I think being on the platform for as long as you have and being able to see people come and go, you know, certain, yeah, certain people. That just, yeah. And it, and it's one of those, I think a lot of it though, comes down to, to that. And sometimes when they want to change what they do and people mm-hmm. don't want them to do something different and yeah. I'll put a second <laughs> channel then. <laughs> um, hey, I, I be telling people that all the time, like maybe just start a second channel and said and, and mm-hmm. build it there. And some that want to see that will go over. I was like, but yeah. it's, if it's you're one not of those... sure. Yeah. If you're not sure, do another channel because, okay. So for me, I always told people I was going to keep my channel a one-stop shop for everything, but I ended up starting a gaming channel because anytime I would have a problem on my main channel, I couldn't stream. So I was just like, oh right. my God. So I was like, I got to do this as protection. So I would, uh, you know, do the, you know, streaming on the, you know, gaming channel. And um, once I really under- started to understand YouTube, mm-hmm. that's when now everything's in the same place now again. So, you know, I have other channels. The gaming channel is, you know, just, uh, it's there. It holds all the other <laughs> streams that I've done and stuff like that. But, yeah, if you're not sure, don't. Like, if your fans have been asking for you to do something, keep it on the same channel. But if they ain't never asked you and you got a bright idea, Correct. either ask them or start a new channel. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird because if they start to see things that they don't want to see, they will leave. They will. They you know, like, I don't. I didn't sign up for this, and I get it. I understand. Um. So before we go, like, what would, for, for someone that would see this and may want to aspire, because you're one of those guys, man, that is a dream chaser and have had a public declaration online and have, have achieved said, you know, goal, Mm -hmm. aspiration in front of millions of people. Yeah. That held me accountable. You know what I mean? (laughs) And so yeah. like, what, what would you say to those that may want to, you know, follow in said footsteps or try to pursue whatever that they're trying to do? Like what, t- what piece of advice would you maybe bestow upon them? Um, you're going to have to have patience with yourself and your channel. You're going to have to have that patience to grow just like with anything else, whether you're honing a skill, you're working out, you're a fighter, whatever it is, a gamer, you've got to own your skill and continue to grow. From what I read, it takes most YouTubers three to five years to pop 
to where they can quit their job. That's mm-hmm. three. Some people pop within the first couple months. Some it takes 10 years to finally pop. Mm-hmm. Just know that you have to have your mindset for the long game. Their mm-hmm. endurance run, it's not a sprint. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, and you're, um, well, you know, I, I know this word consistency. Consistency is key with this. With YouTube, you can get lost in the algorithm. And I would say that you need to do at least one video a week. I would never, I personally, if I was a one video type of person, you know, maybe someone that does animation or whatever, I would make sure I'm putting out something once a week. Because mm. you can, like my gaming, this happened to my gaming channel a couple of times because I was experimenting. Sometimes I would game on the main channel. Sometimes I would go to the gaming channel. And at one time the gaming channel was really moving and I left it. And it never quite got back to growing or getting the views that it did when it was doing its best. Mm. So that's one of the worst things you can do is give up on your channel. So yeah, you need to keep going, have that patience, move forward and just just keep doing it. Bro, I appreciate you, man. I I appreciate having the time, taking the time. Uh, I think a lot of times, you know, uh, for for whatever, my audience, even here in Australia, people think I'm in my 20s. I don't get it. They're like, I get it. I get 25 here. I've been getting it for the last five years. They're like, you're like 25, right? I'm like, no, (laughs) no, I'm not. (laughs) But but I think it's one of sometimes, you know, getting, getting, uh information from a more experienced human sometimes it just hits different and it, i'm i'm glad that you're able to to still give that information uh because a lot of times man like for whatever reason the gurus are getting younger and younger and i'm like yeah. like i get i get i get that you have you have some interesting philosophies you read but sometimes lived experience just wins it just yeah. it just makes more sense because you've you've seen a lot you know what yeah. i'm saying you've seen a lot you've experienced a lot so i thank you for the time man i know you you're yeah. a busy guy and you, you run your channel so um i appreciate it man thank you so much for, for being here yeah, no problem no um what's funny is what you're saying reminds me of two things when, when it comes to men and when it comes to women, one of the worst things that can happen to a guy that's either unguided or is not self-aware is early success. Because early mm. su- success to a guy makes him think he can't be taught anything else. He mm. becomes unteachable. He's, he's the guy that maybe he's the strongest kid in school. Maybe he's beat up everybody in school that has ever challenged him. Then he finally gets in a ring with a guy that's twice his age and he thinks he can beat him just because he's beat up all the younger guys in high school and he gets knocked out in one shot. Hmm. Guys that get early success really young, not all of them. It's the ones that's not self-aware. They think because you're an adult, if they're making more money than you, then they must be smarter than you. Then they must know more than you. No. You have a talent that you hone that made you maybe hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars, but that doesn't mean that you know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, because I know all of them. You just knew Z. You got what I'm saying? And your mm. lack of knowledge will destroy you. When it's women, you know what it is? It's a pretty girl who gets hit on by Chris Brown. Mm. Then she thinks that she... She only deserves A-list men. She only (laughs) deserves top-tier men. Just because Kurt Brown hit on you, he might have a little bad taste or was a little weak at that point. It does not mean that you Mm. are top-tier woman. And then you can't, other women can't tell her nothing. Because Chris Mm. Brown hit on her, now she won't date a dude on her level or, you know what I mean? She must have A-list, you know, star. So right. it's just funny how early success can warp 
people's minds. And I, one thing I want to say, I never, ever, and I've seen people write this about me, and it's a lie. What it is, is it's their misunderstanding of me. Like when I've been attacked online before, I've made videos and people say, oh, this guy, he's full of himself now. He's arrogant. No, I just know who I really am. I've always mm. stayed humble and I've never said I'm the best at this. I'm the best at this. And nobody will ever, you know why? Because everybody's star rises and falls. You'll never be able to keep that peak um, popularity ever. You may get to it again. But it could yeah. fall again. You may get to mm -hmm. it again, and it could fall again. And you just never know the way life is. What if YouTube shut down tomorrow? You know what I mean? If you're that arrogant guy running your mouth every day, talking trash, oh, you're going to have a ton of emails when YouTube shut down. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you big and bad now. Who are you now? You know, <laughs> because I know. Um, also, it, it's not good to be arrogant. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just, I've always stayed humble and I'm gracious for everything that's come to me. And of course, I hope I get more and I fulfill the rest of my dreams, but never get too full of yourself. Just stay confident and consistent. Yeah. So. I love it. <laughs> hey man, I, I appreciate you, bro. What a, what an awesome way to end it. Hey man.